Hi, Chris Stelling here of Gam Keto, and I got to keep this short. Got a flight tonight. The point I want to make today is that there's nothing wrong with building your game off of some code that maybe you found from a tutorial, that maybe is from one of your past projects. That's not cheating. That's game development. That is how games get made. This came up recently in one of my email exchanges with some of the people that I help out via email, and it was literally like guy felt guilty because he had followed a tutorial online about how to get kind of a project going. And then he kind of tried to merge and wrestle that into the kind of game he wanted to build. That's how game development happens. When you're new to game development, it often comes from one of those outside tutorials. A lot of people in some of our club games, it's literally come from, they took my video courses on Udemy, uh, code your first game, the free one, or how to program games, the second course in that sequence, and then built games starting from that point by tearing it down and then building it back up in the direction that the game they wanted to build. A lot of my training clients do the same kind of thing. It's not just in the club. And as an experienced game programmer, that's how most of my projects start. The difference being I'm just stealing from my own past code as opposed to a tutorial I find on the internet where I'm very rarely totally starting from scratch. I mean, you you might have seen that video where I, I program a little game in five minutes, six minutes, starting from a blank file. That's just kind of like a novelty. That's kind of like a, a, you, a can. Uh, most of the time when I'm building an actual game, my first step is I look back in my past projects, I figure out which of these is closest or has the most in common, if we picture like a Venn diagram overlap with the kind of game I want to build now, I pick that up and just like I described a minute ago, right, I gut out the parts that are unrelated, I tear it down to the part that I'm going to be able to reuse and then build up off of that. So John Nesky, one of the smartest guys I've ever met, a former collaborator on Topple for iPhone, he helped us be the among the first physics games on iPhone back in like 2008, uh, field engineer for that game company, super brilliant guy. The way he explained it many years ago, and I, I, it's like his phrasing of it, was that uh, it's so much easier to find something that works and turn it into something else that works than to just kind of like start and then try to, and, and, and the case where this came up, right, is I think it was even probably in that same project, I was just trying to get sound working on, or you know what, I think we were actually just we were trying to get a OpenGL quad on the iPhone back then. And, you know, this is before we had good libraries and stuff for that. And long before Unity was the way to deploy to that platform. And so the entire game actually got built off of just opening up the example code from Apple as to how to put a sprite, you know, quad in the middle of the screen. And the whole game became that. Like I, I changed that into what I needed. I changed the other bits of the code and added the functionality for the movement and the input and whatever. But it started with here's the thing that works. Even if the only way it works is putting a graphic on the screen, on early iOS Objective-C for OpenGL, there was quite a bit of other machinery about initializations and setup code and, and all kinds of other hooks built in there that I could have spent weeks, maybe months, trying to dig through documentation to master and learn enough to be able to write all that stuff myself. But that part wasn't the gameplay. That part wasn't why I was there. That part wasn't what made this game different from any other game. That part, I didn't really have much reason to soak up the knowledge of. I just grabbed an example of here it's doing it. And it's a case where in that case, it was literally Apple's example code. So it was pretty appropriate to build off. It wasn't like, I'm not suggesting, obviously, you don't go find an open source project, use open source stuff without citing open source and the license and all that stuff. It's not what you ought to be doing. But, you know, obviously, if it's example code from Unity or if you follow a tutorial from Unity official, or if it's a case where it's like me, where specifically I'm out, I'm out there as a teacher and an educator producing content to provide a foundation to build off of, like that's what it's for. That's not stealing, that's not guilt, that's not being a bad developer, that's not missing the core concepts, that's allowing you to focus on what's your game do that's different, what's the gameplay code work like, how do, how do you want your graphics moving around the screen and why and for what consequence, rather than the simple bit of like, well, how do I get the initialization code together to even be able to do this? Now, a lot of that's gotten simpler thanks to things like Unity, which do a lot of that for us, or even like in a browser game, where in a lot of cases, there's a little bit of setup code still, but a lot of the machinery is kind of the browser taking care of a few extra layers for us versus kind of how things used to be in C or Objective-C and early iOS development, whatever. Anyway, just want to reassure people and make that point that it is not a bad thing to be reusing, especially your own past code or even tutorial code as a part of trying to build the project you want to build. Personalizing, it's a great way to learn for that matter. So anyway, that's it for now. Like I said, I got, a, I got a bunch else to get done today. Um, also, I have a huge announcement coming up in like maybe about two weeks. Uh, so look forward to sharing that here when I can. Bye for now.